Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. And no, we are not going to do a remake of Phantasm. We're going to take a look at this really sweet 1974 Cadillac hearse. And it is really sweet with the mods as well. Let's get started. And dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to mourn the passing of... No, no, no. We're not actually mourning, and no one died. So welcome back to the Wizard Shop. This is my buddy Pat, and he is an actual funeral service professional. That's what he does for a living. And this is his hearse. Though it is not the hearse that's currently in use, it's kind of like a collection. You have several, don't you? I do have several. I've got uh, three of them. Three of them? Yeah, in fact, uh, you've had one of them here in your shop before. Yep. And that was a uh, 1994 Superior Cadillac Sovereign. Mm -hmm. Um, this one is a 1974 millimeter Landau Traditional, and just yesterday I brought home a 1970 Superior Cadillac Crown Sovereign combination. Wow. Yeah. So there's actually like different, like an automobile that you would buy at a dealership, there's different levels of hearses? That is correct. So with, in 1974, uh, you could have got this model here, which is a Landau Traditional, like I said. Or if you wanted to spend, I think it was like an extra $400 more, you could get the Olympian model. Mm. Um, so now with the Olympian, that came with a more upscale interior. Mm -hmm. um, across the top, there would have been a dual chrome band that would have went up the roof and down the drip rail. Okay. And so the lighting on the interior was a little bit nicer, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll take a look around this one, and you can tell me some of the features and some things about sure. it. I've got lots of questions. And I'm okay. sure you guys out there probably have tons of questions, too, because living the life of a funeral profession is probably something not a lot of people actually talk about. It's really not. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things where um, I would say that my goal is to try to make our society a little bit more death positive. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I know death is kind of a taboo thing to talk about. However, it is something that does need to be talked about because right. you don't want to leave your family in the lurch. Right. Definitely. So, we'll start up here. Okay. So, here's the front of the 74, what did you call it? A Miller Meteor? Miller Meteor. Miller yes. Meteor. Are these, these purplish lights, is that stock or is that a mod? That is a mod. Uh, one of the things that uh, funeral cars do is they will have purple lights on them or orange lights, depending on where you are. Okay. I choose purple because well, I like purple. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got the purple brights on this for use in funeral processions is what they would be used for. They're also known as silent sirens. Silent sirens, okay. That's correct. And as well, I've also got LED flashers. Yep. Yes, I have strobe lights in the grill mm -hmm. and also on the rear door back there. They, these are all also purple. Oh, they're purple. Yep. Okay, they light up purple. Mm -hmm. Interesting. See, I would have never noticed that, that purple is the color for a funeral hearse. Yes. Or orange. Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of one of those traditional type things. Okay. Um, it just shows, I guess, somberness and thing, you know, things like that. Let's get this hood opened up and okay. see what's underneath. All right. So I know enough about in the automotive world to know that this is a Cadillac 472. Yes. That's okay. That's correct. It is a 472. In 1974, this 472 put out about 205 horsepower, 325 pound-feet of torque at about 3,200 RPM. Um, as you can see, she's not that clean, but uh, she still gets us to where we have to go. Okay. Um, has the hood flip mod up that, or the lid flip mod there, gives mm -hmm. you about an extra 1,700 R, uh, horsepower, something like that. 17 horsepower? Yeah, 17 horsepower. It sounds horsepower. really cool, too. Yeah, it sounds great. <laughs> um, I noticed the HEI distributor, it was not too long before this, this was like the first beginnings of HEI. Yes, that is yeah. correct. That is correct. It has an older air conditioning system. Does the AC, another compressor is missing? Um, the AC compressor is actually in a box in my garage right now. Okay. Uh, we had to take it off so we can get to the fuel line on the carburetor. Yeah. Uh, that compressor covers it up, so. Okay. But as of right now, you know, it all will still work, but yeah. we just took it off. Very cool. What's really kind of, I don't know if it's strange or not, but this engine has hauled a lot of people to their final resting place. Absolutely, it has. That's kind of odd. I, you know, you look at engines all the time, but then to think to what this engine has done, what its job was, mm -hmm. actually kind of cool in a way. Have you had to do any major work to the engine, or has it just been... No, nothing major. Nothing major. It's been, uh, it's been a fairly solid car. 
They were very good engines. They last a long time. Mm -hmm. the, the block, I know, has very high nickel content. They yes. hardly ever wear. Yes. Yeah, this car here is still very much a project. Uh, this spring, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to finish up the body work that needs to be done. Uh, the car will no longer be black. Mm -hmm. uh, the car was originally black when it was purchased by a funeral home in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Okay. Uh, at some point in its life, somebody repainted it silver. Hmm. Um, and so we just went back to this black for Halloween, kind of get it all one color type of deal. Okay. So, but we have another color in mind for it. All right. Okay, so we go down this side here, and the first thing I notice is missing some hubcaps. Yes. Um, actually, on the way up here, one of them decided to go live his best life on the side of the highway. So I have to go find that on the way home. Oh, wow. And um, we've got the other three in the back because they're kind of hard to find. I bet they are. <laughs> this, this must be hubcap week because Hoovy from Hoovy's Garage on his Bentley Azure actually just lost a hubcap. <laughs> and it's like unobtainium. Yeah, sorry, Tyler. <laughs> So yeah, I know the feeling. It's hubcap week. Yep. I've heard that bad things come in threes. Don't say that. No. <laughs> okay. I still have to drive this home. <laughs> okay. Okay. So like you mentioned, you painted it black. It was silver, but originally it was black. Originally the car was black. It was a tuxedo black with a black top. At some point in the car's life, it was repainted silver. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've done some body mods to it, like we've smoothed, there was stainless trim that went down the side. Yeah. Uh, we removed that, filled the holes. As you can see, we painted the car satin black. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it, this car has had a, an interesting life. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, it came from a funeral home out of Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Then it wound up in Denver where it lived most of its life. Well, one of the previous owners uh, took the car pretty much yearly down to Burning Man mm -hmm. and was using it as a taxi cab out there on the playa. Oh, wow. And so one of the things that he did, and sadly he did, was he decided he was gonna cut the rear floor out of the car. Yeah. So from just in front of the wheel well here forward, mm -hmm. he cut it completely out. Wow. So one of the things I did was I went in, re-welded in um, angle iron mm -hmm. like it would have had originally and put an all new floor in there. Uh, so it's still not done. Like I said, this is an ongoing project. If I could stop buying hearses, I would get one done. <laughs> um, but they're kind of my thing. And so this is a common fabric here that you're probably familiar with in the funeral service. It's called mm -hmm. Damask, isn't it? Yes, that is correct. It is called Damask. Yep. That was actually very popular in Cadillacs in these years. Mm -hmm. Being, sure even was. they weren't affiliated with funeral services, they still mm -hmm. had damask pattern. Yep. It was considered very fancy, Ben. Okay. Definitely closed like a bank vault. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that we've had to go in, we're cut. I need to redo this roof anyway, because as you can see here, this is where um, a manufacturing line would be. Mm -hmm. Well, there's couple little holes here and then there's holes there just above that landau bar oh yeah which is i see what it. this is called yeah so what he had done is he had drilled in coat hooks onto each side mm -hmm. and hung a sign off of it advertising the fact that he was a taxi cab oh wow yes yeah. so. <laughs> and here we arrive at the receiving end of this yep. car it receives its clients mm -hmm. it says get in loser <laughs> yeah I'm sure it's hauled a few losers. It most likely has. Most <laughs> likely. All walks of life. Yeah, absolutely. What is this down here? It says Gold Chains? Uh, Gold Chainers Car Club. Gold uh, Chainers. So okay. that is a club that I am a part of. Okay. It's kind of a worldwide type of deal, kind of loosely organized type of thing. All right. Um, they only have about 100 members mm -hmm. worldwide. And so they only made a hundred of those. So if you have one, then you're in. And if you have it, you don't get rid of it. Wow. Type of deal. <laughs> so uh, there's one other here in Kansas. He lives out towards uh, Independence. Very cool. And this is where you fill up here, obviously. Yep. yep. Here's the gas filler neck. Okay, well, let's check out the other side. And just like you mentioned, it says here Miller Meteor. And you said the next level up was Olympian. Yep. Yeah, okay. Miller Meter is the coach builder. Okay. This is a Landau traditional. All right. 
Really like the stainless steel trim there. It looks real nice. Oh yeah, this um, hearse is when they, with the stainless trim, just absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Absolutely gorgeous. Good luck finding it though, if you ever need to replace it. Oh, I bet it's unobtainium as well. Well, yeah, because you know, when they build these cars, when they come from Cadillac, they don't come from Cadillac as a Fleetwood or a Calais or DeVille, anything like that. They would come as just your front end. Like mm -hmm. you have your front fender, your hood, and then your dashboard and your seat would be in a box strapped to the chassis. Wow. So that's all it was. Like from the firewall back, it was just a bare chassis. And then all of this was stamped and assembled by the Millimeter Coach Company. Okay. Uh, now it's like with my 94, it originated as a Fleetwood mm -hmm. and it went to uh, Superior is what they call the blank. Mm -hmm. And so it was the B9Q commercial chassis had the Fleetwood body on it, and they basically cut everything away that didn't need to be a hearse, stretched the frame, and then build it up from there. Well, a lot of these things you're telling me is exactly why I brought you here today to show us, talk about mm -hmm. your line of work, show us your hearses, is that these are things that people actually really don't know much about. Right, right. And it's one of the things that I love taking these to car shows mm -hmm. because it gets people talking. You know, they, they can ask me any questions that they have, you know, and I'll give them my best answer. Yeah. Um, and it, it really, they start to get information. You know, and you're at the car show and I'm sitting there in a t-shirt and shorts. They can come up, they can look at it, they can sit in it, they can crawl around in it. I'll even let them drive it if they want to. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it just, it makes them more comfortable to come in and talk to, you know, talk to somebody that's in the business. Right. Without actually having to go into the funeral home and, and sit down where it could be uncomfortable. We'll go around to this side here. You, like you said, you have all your hubcaps off. Yeah. So you don't lose any more of them. You don't need that. <laughs> nope. These are the turn signals here? Those are the turn signals and the brights, yes. I remember those days. Well, I wasn't alive during those days, but I've had cars that had those. Oh, it's so them. cool. It is so cool. It is. It? It's amazing. Yeah. I love it. Okay, ladies and gents, here we are. Here's our interior tour. And as always, we start with the mileage. And Pat is telling me that is original 75,000 miles. So apparently the trips to the old cemetery weren't very far from the funeral home or the church. So not bad, but let's take a peek around here. It does look like vintage caddy. Simple controls, got some HVAC over there. How's it go around? We've got the shrunken head and our microphone. Wait, shrunken head? What, what, is there a reason you have him on here? Because he's fun to have. Okay, well, you know, they are kind of interesting. <laughs> Being an art major, I've seen a few in my day in art collections, there and you go. they are kind of creepy looking. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep those uh, skull inside that skin there. Yeah, his name's Carl. Carl, of course. He, he looks like a Carl. Mm -hmm. Okay. As we move down, we've not added anything to the radio, so a very classic little radio there. It at least is FM, so at least you can get a few stations today without all the static we appreciate with the AM band. Looks like you've got a Bluetooth in there, of course. That yep. makes life, you know, a lot easier. It does. <laughs> but that is not stock. That is not stock. That is my sirens and PA system, and also my controls here for the strobe lights that I have on the front and the back. Um, that was added into the car just for funsies by one of the previous owners. Um, when I go out to Denver every year for HearseCon, we do a thing they call the light and siren show and that's why that was added okay i was wondering because you know most people you're transporting here aren't listening to things you usually don't talk to them much no no not normally no. um i use that a lot like in traffic and uh, <laughs> probably gets me into more trouble than it's worth but that's fine <laughs> sounds that's fine yeah it sounds no, fine. fine it's fine that's fine <laughs> So normally we scoot to the back seat, but that's one hell of a back seat, and I think we're going to talk about that one in just a little bit. But as we scoot down, we can see a lot more damask. We've got some leather here on our seats. Looking good. I mean, it's pretty comfortable. I have not ridden in uh, a hearse ever, <laughs> so I can't tell you about the bolster and if you'd really need it, because you better not be drifting around corners. Yeah. <laughs> We do look at the headliner and let me tell you there's some hellacious space up there there's at least a good foot between where your head is to the top way way up there so it makes wearing a top hat easy oh it does make it, it does have a top hat in the car with us so it does make wearing your top hat very nice 
Actually, the height of this roof reminds me of the special car that Henry Ford made for his wife. They made the top half much higher so she didn't have to take off her hat. Oh, it's at I, the yeah. I didn't know that. They, I, I, we have toured the Ford family uh, house, and her car is still there. Very nice. Talking about the back seat back there, let's head back there and see what's going on. Why don't you uh, give us a tour of the inside here, Pat? All right. You've probably opened these doors many times. Many, 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 many times. You didn't bring one of your clients with you, did you? No, not today. There's nobody in there? No, this is my trunk. That's your trunk? This is my trunk. Are those jumper cables? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple sets of jumper cables. I got some coolant. Um, there was some oil in here earlier. It's now up front in the engine. Oh, my um, goodness. Yeah, power steering fluid. There's some stainless trim in there. You know, tire shine, things like that. Do you ever get weird questions opening that up, getting objects out of there? All the time. All the time? Yeah, I had to stop at Walmart today to get some transmission fluid. And uh, the guy that parked next to me um, was like, you just scared the hell out of me opening that casket. I'm like, that's my trunk, man. <laughs> He's like, that's cool. And he, and he left. That's kind of <laughs> so, weird. Yeah. But it's cool at the same time. It's oh, really yeah. cool. Has this one actually been... Well, I guess it hasn't been used. It'd be no. underground. Well, this one, this one has been used. Oh, it has? Yes. Okay, so in the funeral business, mm -hmm. um, you can have a cremation service, which we call, at where I work, we call it a traditional cremation. Mm -hmm. So this casket is what is known as a ceremonial casket. Okay. Okay. So the body would be in here. It would be lined out just like a normal casket would. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference or you wouldn't be able to tell that this is what is also a rental casket. Mm. Um, so this casket has been used many, many, many Oh, times. that is so weird. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. And so um, this one here cost me nothing. It was free fitty. Okay. Um, we bought a new one. Mm -hmm. And so this one, instead of it just hanging out, it wound up in the back of the they car. Say here, get it out yeah. of here. Well, I got a lot of questions. Okay. Let's have a seat here. Okay. Well, my hands are getting really cold. Maybe it's the cold weather. You didn't bring the Grim Reaper with you, did you? No. 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 Not today. Not today. <laughs> okay. Well, since I got you here, uh -huh. we're, we're looking at your car and everything. I'm sure it sparks a lot of curiosity and a lot of questions that you could answer. Most yeah. people can't answer. Mm -hmm. I have actually coming over here today, I have one question that came to mind. We all know a funeral is a sad thing. It's a yes. sad moment. Yes. But has there been an incident where someone attending the funeral was actually glad that the person was gone? You know, actually, yes. Um, a lot of times in the case of uh, when somebody's being abused, mm -hmm. uh, when they find out that their abuser has died, mm -hmm. they'll go to the service just to make sure that they are dead. And it's one of those things where I understand because, you know, as long as that person's alive, they're living their life in fear. Right. You know, because you can walk right through a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. But once that finality happens and they're dead, mm -hmm. then, yeah, I can imagine that's a, that's a very freeing moment. That's pretty powerful. So, yeah. so a passing of someone can be celebratory for different reasons. Absolutely. Absolutely. Celebrate their life. You can also, some people, like you just mentioned, could celebrate the fact that they're now gone. Yes. And they will never be back yep. again. Wow, I never even thought that that would be a possibility, guys. I mean, I, obviously it's a possibility, but it's just never crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. So another question I have, which some of you guys could, in the comments, could put some questions and I can probably get the answer for you. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, so when someone, like during their sleep, they pass away, mm -hmm. do they just go straight to the funeral home or how does that all work? Uh, nine times out of ten, uh, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. If somebody passes in their sleep, uh, funeral home be called out. We'll go pick them up, bring them back to the mortuary. Uh, and other times where if the uh, body is, if the death was unattended, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes a coroner will be called out. Uh, if there's really no explanation as to why that person passed away, whether it was attended or not. Mm -hmm. uh, there are chances that they will go to the coroner's office if there's questions surrounding the death. Okay. Does it, in your daily life, since this is what you do for a living, does it affect, like, your mental state or the way you see life or the way you see death? <sighs> does it affect my mental status or the way I look at life? Yeah, absolutely it does. Mm -hmm. um, especially when it's somebody that's around my age. I mean, I'm only 41 years old, you know. Right. Um, to realize that 
life is temporary. Right. Um, it makes you want to go out and actually experience life and everything that it has to offer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the th- when people ask me why I drive hearses, why I own hearses, I say, well, life's too short to drive boring cars. Right. I mean, hearses aren't everybody's kick, mm-hmm. but I love driving them uh, just because yeah, I have fun with them. Right. You know, it's just like everything you have sitting here in the garage. I mean, obviously, the owners of these cars are experiencing are experiencing life. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, you also look at the fact that, you know, when you're sitting down and meeting with parents of children that have passed. Oh, that would be hard. You know, whether they're newborn or you're meeting with a 90-year-old woman whose 60-year-old son has died. Mm-hmm. There's there's no other feeling like that. Right. You know, just because uh, you kind of understand you know, it makes you really think about yeah. what it is that you do. And I think one of the things that would really change your outlook on things is not only the fact of the experience of that, but the the occurrence so many times. You've been through it over and over mm-hmm. and over and over. Yeah. yeah. You know, they say you get used to it, which I guess in a way you do, mm-hmm. you know, because you deal with it day in, day out. Um, but there are things that you don't really get used to. Right. Um, they say once you get cold to the job to where you just go in and it's just a job now, you should probably look at trying to do something else because while you can go in and you can fake it, you can, you know, get the dead where they're going and the grieving to where they need to be, it's still, it, there's really no added value to it. Right. So if you still have that emotion towards what you're doing, then you're, you're doing okay. And then to get into that line of work, it's not something you just go fill out an application. There's actually schooling you have to go to, right? Yeah, there is There is schooling that you have to go through. Um, there's lots of mortuary schools around, mm-hmm. around the country that you can go to. Um, in the state of Kansas, uh, you can actually go to the board and uh, fill out paperwork if you have a minimum of 63 credit hours. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll give you your associate, your associate, your assistant funeral director's license. Okay. Um, and then you would do an internship or an apprenticeship mm-hmm. for a year, and then you get your full license. Okay, I just have one more question, okay. and then we'll dive in the actually inside of here. Okay. Have you done a funeral where there was only one in attending, or maybe even none? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. There have been several where it has just been either me and the grave digger, or me and the cemetery, and the you go out and we actually have a book that we'll read from, we'll say some words just to kind of give it, a, you know, meaning to it, regardless of whether or not there's anyone there. Wow. So yeah, there's there's been times where that has happened. That would be very strange. It'd be strange to, to conduct the funeral. It's basically just between you and the, the digger. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yep, pretty much. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it is. All right, well, let's take a look inside of okay. here. So on this channel, we talk a lot about maintenance and upkeep and the repair cost of keeping a car on the road. But this isn't just a car. There is things going on inside of here that you would never even think of to maintain, to keep things in in working order that wouldn't even cross our minds. And I can see one thing, Pat, right off my mind is keeping these in order. Yep. Rolling smooth. You don't want them getting stuck while you're trying to... No, actually, you you sure don't. So... Now, these rollers here, these actually came out of a hearse that I parted out some years ago. These are actually out of another Superior. Okay. Um, the reason why these don't match, these are what the original ones here would have looked like in the floor. Mm-hmm. But like I said, the previous owner took the floor out. So right. So there was nothing in here. So I basically just used what I had until I can find these. Okay. Um, and that's one of the issues with owning an older hearse mm-hmm. is very rarely will you find the parts that you need. Uh, to oh yeah, uh, because these uh, beer pen holders here, mm-hmm. you can still find those on occasion. The rollers, they're pretty much gone. Uh, they've gone to the crusher a lot of times. Um, I just happened to find this cot bar here mm-hmm. up in South Dakota, I believe it was. Okay. It was actually wrapped up in the corner of some guy's garage. Um, but yeah, the stainless trim, glass, you're not going to find it. Right. So, and we talk about in this channel a lot about getting, being very difficult to acquire parts. Mm-hmm. This is like a whole new level here, isn't yeah, it? It really is. It really is. Because when they build these cars, they're only, they're built to order. Mm-hmm. You know, 
they have a production line, yes, but the cars out on the production line have already been purchased. Right. Uh, they're not going to go sit on a lot and hope that they get purchased. And on the side we see, what were those, are those called sconces? Or? Those are called sconces, yes. And the lighting would be for like, uh, if it's dark outside, so you yep. can see. Yeah, it's, um, it's for that reason, of course. Yeah. But then also when you're, um, you know, at the service, kind of like we have it set up right now, mm -hmm. it's an added effect. Right. Um, I've got the cool little LED light strips mm -hmm. right in here. That's for Halloween purposes. Oh, for Halloween purposes. Yeah, Halloween purposes. Yeah. Um, it actually gives it a pretty creepy glow <laughs> at night. Yeah. Okay, so some of the things that you would think of that I can't think of, what would be maintenance items like along the sides here? or Are those storage or what is that? No, that, these are just wheel well covers. Oh, wheel well. Yeah, these are just wheel well covers. Okay. Um, so there's really nothing back there. It's just big open area. Mm -hmm. um, but your wiring, like your, autom your car's wiring, mm -hmm. runs back there. So you, it's pretty easy to get back there and look for things. Right. Um, uh, door handles, things like that, you know, it's pretty much standard Cadillac. Mm -hmm. uh, windows do not roll down in the back. I was going to ask, do they roll down? I wouldn't see why they would need to. No. Well, the ones on my 70 do. Mm -hmm. The uh, the ones on my 70 do, my 69 did. Um, millimeter, they decided not to do that for mm -hmm. whatever reason. But you're right, why would you need to? Yeah. Um, but yeah. But back here, pretty much just changing lights mm -hmm. and just maintaining cosmetic appearances. Uh, pretty much maintaining a hearse is like maintaining any standard car okay um, mechanical is not really a big deal one of the things that you have to remember like case in point when i changed out the alternator mm -hmm. so the alternator on this car is an 80 amp okay okay now standard cadillac is only a 60 mm -hmm. but here's the deal yeah you can save money by buying the 60 amp but the mounting points are different Oh, okay. <laughs> so since this is a commercial chassis, mm -hmm. you have to get the commercial chassis one, which not a big deal. It, you know, it changes out. Right. Um, it, brakes are a little bit bigger. Shocks are heavy duty. Okay. Springs are heavy I mean, duty. Commercial yeah, chassis it's all brakes. Commercial brake. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. And then, in either a modern hearse or even in these older ones, for different weather conditions, is it heated or cooled back here? I really wouldn't matter, but so and this one, it's it's not heated and cooled. Mm -hmm. uh, my seventy is okay because it was a combination. So when I say combination, it means it was used as both a hearse and an ambulance. Okay. Uh, so there, it had the seventy has attendant seats back here in the back, and once I get it running, I'll bring it up here and mm -hmm. show it to you. Yeah. Uh, but it does have heating and cooling. This one does not. Okay. It's really not a concern with it going to be putting someone in the ground right, right so all right well i guess the last thing that we need to look at is put it on a lift yeah let's do it all right okay so before we get this thing up in the air we have to keep in mind balancing normally my customers vehicles do not have caskets in them but caskets weigh quite a bit they're not 20 or 30 pounds some of them can be hundreds of pounds. So, it weighs as much as the engine, or maybe even more. So one thing we need to keep in mind is to, you have to shift it forward or back. And trust me guys, I have worked on hearses before. I've also worked on pickup trucks from farmers where the bed is full of bricks or full of dirt, and they weren't able to get that out because the truck broke down. So you have to really keep that in mind, or either you can get it up in the air and the whole thing. You've, you guys have seen the memes on, on the internet where a car falls off the lift. It can be really bad. So let's get this thing in the air. So we'll take a look underneath the hearse. I've been under a few, but not a whole lot. And keep in mind, guys, this is a, a work in progress. He's still restoring this thing. There's some, some work that still needs to be done. But the main thing we're looking at is the differences between a normal Cadillac and then what have they done to make this a hearse. So we'll start up here, and there looks like a little bit of a coolant leak, Pat. Yep. I had a little bit of a leak uh, last week, and it's been patched and everything else. I really need to pull the radiator out and have it rebuilt. Okay. It probably needs a radiator rebuild. Oh yeah, most definitely. That front, that front main seal is probably leaking. 
Yeah, I think it's actually the oil pan gas oh, the seal it? is dry. Oh, okay. So it's not that big of a deal. And a little bit of wetness, that's from the coolant leak. Yeah. And I'll check all that before I head back. A lot of people Just that do case. engine swaps on these Cadillacs with the 472s, the mm -hmm. big difficulty is the oil pan. It's a mid sump. Right. It's kind of in the middle of the engine. You got your steering right next to it. It can be mm -hmm. kind of difficult. Starter is easy to get to. Yep. Check these wheels out. Pads are nice and thick. Yep. So one of the differences between the uh, stock Cadillac and a commercial chassis Cadillac, these wheels are what they call commercial wheels. Yeah. And so they will actually not fit on a stock Cadillac, and a stock Cadillac won't fit on these either. Oh, wow. A lot heavier duty, probably. It's heavier duty, backspacing is a little bit different. Everything looks good over there as well. I imagine that's a TH400? Yes, it is. Yep. Looks like it needs a transmission mount at some point. That's probably where my vibration's coming from. Yeah, it's probably an alignment deal with the vibration. Yeah, this is actually the first time I've been in this car. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you get a free little ch check under your car. Yeah, I like it. And get an idea of some things for the future. Absolutely. This is called a double carden joint. This would be typical you find on really long cars. This one actually happens to have two double carden joints because, because it's very long. That's a very long shaft, Mrs. Wizard. Uh, you better believe it is. That's in a different time zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the frame looks like, let's see here. Maybe they did they patch in here or did it come already made? No, actually this entire this entire frame was as it as it came from Detroit. Oh that's right. You yeah. mentioned it came like a yeah. chassis yeah. a rolling chassis. Yeah. It was just a rolling chassis. And I like my ninety four. Yeah. They would have uh, they would have split it about here and then stretched it twenty six inches, I believe. Okay. It looks like this carrier bearing is probably some vibration as well. You can see yeah. that. That'd be one of those incidents where you just pull the whole drive shaft and do everything, mm -hmm. put it back on. Yeah, absolutely. The joints seem fine. One single big exhaust down this entire length of car here. I'm just glad to see that it has all the floor. It actually has three double carden joints. I was thinking it had two. There's the twin joints like that. That's interesting. That looks like a very heavy duty rear axle. Yes, sir. It's almost like a truck. I'm not sure what the uh, gear ratio is on that. Well, hearses don't typically travel at highway speeds, do they? No, not typically. They just go through town to the cemetery <coughs> and back. Yeah, this one here, she sits pretty happy at about 65. Yeah. Those are big commercial drum brakes there. Mm -hmm. Shocks look good. Tires look good, and here's our big fuel tank. Probably not too worried about fuel economy with a hearse, huh? Uh, no, I get about eight miles to the gallon. Eight miles to the gallon? Yeah, if I'm lucky. If you're lucky? Yeah. Well, it's not really something to be concerned of when you're hauling a loved one to their final resting place. No, not usually. So you got a transmission mount you got some uh, work on the drive shaft like the carrier bearing a radiator and a boy really there's not that much you could have this thing totally mechanically fine yeah and you can start focusing on the other things you mentioned mm -hmm. yeah and that's the plan this spring we're gonna just tear it down and just go at it yeah so. it's got good bones you really got a good starting point on it though yeah you know actually i uh accidentally traded for this car oh yeah yeah and i uh, came out on top Oh, yeah? Yeah, that Rolls Royce I had in here was actually what I traded yeah, for. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, you remember that one? Yeah, yeah the I, think you, one. I think you came out ahead. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, let's get this thing on the ground. Okay. So one thing I think was really cool about you collecting hearses, even though it's affiliated with your line of work, it can kind of take your mind off of those things and you can focus on mechanical fixing things. And It really does. Yeah. Um, I spend a lot of time on these mm -hmm. and it's pretty much whenever I'm not at the funeral home, I'm working on a hearse. Okay. Uh, people think it's kind of weird, you know, obviously that 
you're not at work while you're working with a hearse. Right. Um, but it does. It it really takes your mind off of the stress of work, of stress of what we do, mm -hmm. and uh, just lets you get out of your head. At a shop I worked at years ago, we worked on a, a funeral home, a local funeral home's hearse. I think it was like a 03 or 04 Cadillac hearse. And we actually worked on it because he took it to a few other shops and they just didn't want to work on it. They're like, this is just too weird, dude. Yep. We don't really want to work on it. We were like, it's a car. Yeah, that's I mean. one of the things I've run into on some occasions. Um, you go in there, you drop it off, and they'll call you up the next day or two. Oh, we don't want to work on your cars. Weird things have been happening in the shop. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, weird things have been happening, yeah, like things superstitious have, things? Yeah. yeah. I think it's just they just don't want to touch it because they don't want to get in it and move it. Yeah, maybe so. they think it's kind of odd. Yeah, but it, it's, you know, it's just like a car, you know. Yeah. But, you know, when it comes to riding one, don't let your first ride be your last. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, so thanks for coming along, yeah, Pat, and bringing out your uh, hearse. Yeah, thanks for having when me. When you get the 1970 done, we'll definitely do a video on that. Okay. All right, sounds good. Sounds and good. again, if you have questions about his line of work, go ahead and post them in the comment section. I can ask him and then answer your question for you. Yeah. And if you're into hearses, maybe I can connect him with you or hearse con or back yeah. and forth or absolutely kind of absolutely. like a little community going on. Yeah. So sounds good. Obviously, we're not going to use any of our shop tools to work on this car because we're not working on it today. But if you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut. We really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss out the 1970 when it comes soon. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, I can't wait. Thanks for watching. Yeah.